Hello there, how are you doing today? Welcome back to Tapas Script and Next.js playlist. Today we are going to talk about an important use case from Next.js Server Actions. Thank you for your response and liking the Server Action Crash Course. I'm very, very happy to know that it is really useful to you. All right, so today's use case may not be so usual, but you might encounter it in your real life coding life or in your office while developing your SaaS or developing your project. We are going to talk about an use case of how to handle additional arguments to server actions that are not coming through your form data. Too much of information if you have not followed the server action crash course, but if you're coming from server action crash course or from any background of server action, I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about. Consider this as a form. And in this form, there are two fields. One is a name, full name, and an email. And there is a submit button. On clicking of the submit button, this form will be submitted. Now, once the form gets submitted, let's say at the background, you're collecting this email and the name and adding this user to your backend database table through server action. Now, what happened over here when you call submit, the server actions gets called and server action gets something called a form data, as you're seeing over here on this method. From form data, you can extract out this field information like email and full name as we see over here. And then taking email and full name, you can do whatever business logic that you want to do. This is a regular paradigm. This is a regular pattern with server actions from your form. But what if you have to pass an additional argument or more arguments to your server actions. Those details are not part of your form data. In that case, how are you going to handle? So in this video, we are going to learn the followings. We will learn why passing additional arguments really required, why this use case is important, and then how to pass this additional arguments. We'll also use plain old JavaScript bind method. People who have used this keyword, understood this keyword, understood what bind method does, they will relate to it. Even if no, I will explain what bind method does and how it is relevant to this video. And then we will extend the same subscription app that we have used in our previous video where we have taken you through the server action crash course. We'll be extending that, do our coding and try to implement what we are talking about in theory and there will be a few key takeaways at the end. Excited? So let's get started. As usual, a humble request from my side to subscribe to Tapascript so that it motivates me further to create great content for you. You can also scan the QR code given over there to connect with me on all other social media handles. In the server action crash course, we had developed a subscription form where you could enter your full name and the email and then subscribe to Tapascript newsletter. And as you subscribe, your details will be published over here. If you remember, we had connected to MongoDB and persisted all the data that you were submitting through server actions to MongoDB. Like this, all the records are going to this particular collection. All the source code so far is in this repo, atapos nextjs hyphen email under send hyphen email this particular branch. Now we are going to create a new branch out of send hyphen email and then we will be start coding the aspects of passing additional arguments to the server actions. But why do you want to do that? Let's assume a case that you want to pass an information to your server action that is not user centric. For example, here full name and email are user centric information because user is providing this information. And once you submit this form, you are passing that information to your server action using form data. But what if something like user ID? you might not want to put a particular input field and ask your user to enter your user ID there directly. They might not even remember the user ID because this is a record that's got saved into the database, some unique ID. But internally, programmatically, you want to pass that user ID to your server action to do something about it. Another use case could be like when you integrate with any kind of payment gateway, for example, Stripe, or PayPal or ReserPay, anything as such, you might have to pass certain information which are not visible, which are hidden to your end user and the form. You can use the hidden type input field to pass those information, but I'll come to that. What are the drawback of doing that? And if you don't want to use the hidden type input field to pass those sensitive information like your user ID, 
maybe some of the IDs related to your payment gateways, but you need those information in your server action, how would you pass that? That's the thing. By default, whenever you fill up something and then submit, your server action is going to get all this information as part of the form data arguments that it receives. But yet we are talking about passing something additional. As we know why we should be doing it, let's know how we should be doing it. I have created a new branch called extra-arg. I have created this branch from the send-email so that all the existing code of subscribing and sending email retains and it becomes a successive code and the enhancements on top of whatever we have accomplished in the server action crash course. Now to demonstrate it inside app folder, let's create one new route called extra-args. You can give any name. Inside that, we'll be create a page file, page.js file. Let's create a component called extra args demo because we are talking about extra arguments to our server action. And here for the time being, let's return a div so that we can test the route say extra args and then finally we will do export default of extra args demo so i have a new route now i'll go to ui so if i go to that route say extra hyphen args i can see this extra args that i have added inside the div that means my that means my route is working great now under components let me create a simple user form new file user hyphen form jsx again a simple react component called user form and this is gonna return a form let's have a simple input box and a button inside this form so as i'm using chat cn already in my project i can import input and i can also import then inside the form let's create a input field i've added a class name a very simple class name and the input field type is text the name is name Similarly, let's add a submit button here on the form level also. Let me add some class name so that it aligns correctly. And then finally, let me export this user form from here. Now coming to page.js file, I can import the user form. And instead of this div over here, let me use this user form. Great. Now if I go to UI, I'm able to see a text field and update username one button coming over here. So I have the form coded. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a server action and going to attach the server action with this forms action. I already have a folder called actions where I was keeping all the actions as part of the crash course. Coming here, let me create one more action called user.js. And as you know that if you're creating a server action, you have to use the directive called use server so that Next.js knows that this is a server action, not a regular function. And over here, I'm creating a server action with the async keyword, of course, function. Let's create update user. And of course, it will get the form data. We know that. On getting the form data, we can do form data dot get, do name, because in the user form, the name attribute of the input box having the value called name. If it is f underscore name or full name, we would have used the same particular value to retrieve the data that user will be putting inside that input box. So I got this name over here. Now after getting this name, let me just do a console.log of name for the time being. All right. And the last thing that I need is coming to the user form. I need to import this update user from my action and coming over here, I'll be using the action attribute and then pass this update user. So this is how I am attaching this update user action with my form action. This is very regular scenario that we have already seen in the crash course. So let's test it out. So it means say if I type some name, say Mike and click on update username. And if I come to my console, I'm able to see Mike over here getting printed. So it means that whenever I am submitting this form, my form action is getting called. And as the form action is getting called, this particular name that I'm typing inside, this is getting printed in the console. So console is logging this one. So it is working. But our point was something else. Our point was passing an additional arguments apart from form data, isn't it? So if I have to pass an additional argument, let's pass something like a user id okay and then let us also do a console.log of this user id fair enough now console.log of user id and the username now this update user in the user form 
automatically getting this form data how is it going to get this user id and where is this user id coming from let's answer the question of where is this user id coming from let's say this user form is getting user id as a prop and i can take this user id pretty much go to my page.js file can pass user id as some random user id value one two three four so now user form is getting a user id props if i go inside user form this user id props is here but i have not passed this user id to this update user which is already taking a user id but i don't have a way to pass it this is where some magic comes and that magic is a purely javascript magic it has nothing to do with nextjs nothing to do with react so here we'll be using the bind method from javascript to create something called a partial function what is a partial function a partial function is about creating a new function from an existing function by passing some additional arguments to it so let's say you have an existing function that existing function is update user from this existing function you want to create another new function passing any additional arguments that's the time you can use the bind method from javascript how do we do that pretty easy we can do like const updated user equals to your this current function which is like update function update user function dot bind now bind the first argument is something called a context context means and against which particular object or against which particular context you are doing this operation and this is specifically to manage the this keyword for us we don't have to manage that so we can keep it as null and as a second parameter we can pass this user id now what will happen we need to update user dot bind null as a context and then the user id it is going to create a new method give us a new method which is called updated user and then updated user will have this user id as an additional parameter or additional argument along with this existing argument so it means now instead of this update user if i call this updated user over here this name is little bit confusing so let me change it and updated user with id so if i call updated user with id over here now what will happen this will be actually called along with the form data that that this particular action automatically passes we know that implicitly plus this particular user id that we are passing explicitly okay so this particular method updated user with id that we have created using the bind method will have the form data plus the additional user id that i have passed from outside right through form data we were already getting the name now my expectation is like this user id which i am passing from this page.js would also come to this user form and from this user form i am passing this user id to create this new method and inside this new method this is nothing but our server action itself because this is a server action this particular server action already having console statement to print this user id and also from form data so both we need to prove now let's go to ui and here i am doing mic again and when you do update username i should see one two three four the user id and mic both in my server console i have clicked on it do you see this here i see one two three four and mic both are appearing correctly over here so it means that i'm successfully able to pass the user id as an additional argument apart from the form data on my form submission to the server action and now as i have passed this to my server action over here i can do anything with it so let's do one thing i have this users already existing in the mongo right let's take any of the existing user id let's say let's take tapasadhikari's user id i've copied that and in the page.js file instead of user id equals to one two three four random let us put this actual user id now go to user form here we have this action let's go to the action the action is getting this user id which is the actual user id that is there in my mongodb you have seen in the last video that we have created a subscriber model right using mongoose so that we can interact with the records on a particular collection called subscriber into the mongodb so i'm going to import that again if you have missed the crash course i would recommend that you go through it the link is in the description of this video even if you have not gone through just assume that we have a way to interact with the database so what we're going to do is like taking that actual id now which is not passed through the form as usual programmatically you are getting it somehow and then using it 
to change something into the database for that user for that purpose only we are doing this so i've taken the subscriber over here now coming here let's do a try and catch so that we can do some kind of error handling so new error error dot message and now inside the try we can do await subscriber dot find by id and update this method here i can pass the user id that's the first one the id that i'm getting through this argument and then if i find a user by that id then the name attribute change it with this particular value that's what i'm saying and this value is coming from the form data user id the identifier is coming through the additional argument the value that i'm going to change is coming through the form data a ideal use case right because user id you won't be accepting from a input field from the user you will get it internally now this should work now for that to happen let me first go to mongodb this particular user name is tapas adhikari now i'll go to the ui and over here let's change tapas adhikari to mike and let's click on update username it is not giving any kind of feedback like toast messages we can fix that as well but let's go to now database and now refresh this one expecting this tapas will change to mike you saw that tapas got changed to mike some of the key takeaways over here one is the same thing as i told like you could have done like apart from using the input type text where you are passing the name let me go to the code here you have input type text i'm passing the name along with that you can also have input type hidden this field won't be available but the problem here that the value will be available still as part of the rendered html so this is a problem if i do something like this say type as hidden name as say user id and then value equals to one two three four you won't see this field on your ui you are not seeing this field right on your ui but if i do inspect you see this here you are seeing it very clearly this even this hidden field so which is not good any smart guy is going to get your user id from here but the way that we had achieved without this hidden field using this bind method was was quite quite smart right now the thing is this bind method works in both client and the server component because it is javascript thing nothing specific to react and nextjs so i hope that you will make use of it now there is one question comes always is like in case of handling actions now i have handled this uh, server actions right in case of handling action if i have to show the toast message along with it how am i going to show the toast message there are multiple ways that you can show the toast messages let me show one of the way in this video but in the subsequent video where i'm going to create the error handling with server actions in much more details there i'll be showing you few more additional ways how you can manage the toast messages okay but here let's see one of the ways and with that we will finish this video so in the user form let us import a toaster from sonar that is coming from chat cn again all right this toast is a client component so i have to use use client for sure for this toast to happen where am i going to use this toast i cannot use this toast after this over here because that's not going to work correct na i am not going to use this toast as a button on click that's not going to work either then where am i going to do this for that to answer what you can do one of the ways to do this is in your action itself here you are doing like update user with id implicitly it is getting the form data isn't it instead of doing that you can change the code in this way you get this form data no worries about it and then this is a function now function definition over here and here i'll be calling update updated user with id and here i can pass, pass the form data explicitly and after this you can do toast dot success and say updated user successfully right in fact this entire thing you can take it out as an additional function so this is one way of handling it but this is not the only way you can manage the toast on a server action submission there are additional ways i am going to show that along with the error handling of server actions in the upcoming videos but let's test this one as we have coded this let's see if this works this time the mike's name let me change to david and i will click on update username you see here updated user successfully now the toast is also coming let me go to database if i refresh this is mike right now i will see david so end to end things are working well all the code we have used so far is in the github and the link is in the description of this video again i would like to request you to go through the server action crash course if you have not gone through i am sure that you're going to enjoy 
and please subscribe to tapas script because i keep creating good content i hope that you like them as well let me know how you like this particular video as well with your like and a comment in the video see you soon again with the next one